Hello lovelies, welcome back to my channel. So today we'll be talking about Elizabeth Taylor and her secret diet and recipes. So in the 1980s, Elizabeth Taylor released a book talking about her dieting secrets and this book was called Elizabeth Takes Off. So I have picked up the book on Amazon, this is a used copy and it has Elizabeth Taylor on the front and it's called Elizabeth Takes Off and it's on weight gain, weight loss, self-image and self Steam. Elizabeth Taylor grew up in the public eye from the time she was just nine years old. That's a lot of pressure for anyone to handle, especially when her weight began to fluctuate later in life. After gaining a pretty significant amount of weight for her short frame, clocking in at 180 pounds in her late 40s and early 50s and becoming the subject of countless cruel headlines, the iconic actress opened up on how she was able to finally shed those pounds and keep them off in her 1987 book, Elizabeth Takes Off. In her memoir, Elizabeth Takes Off, Taylor gave a refreshingly frank glimpse into her life and attitude about her weight. Quotes, one of the reasons I decided to write this book was that I was so disturbed by the hundreds of articles saying that my weight gain and by implication other women's was a result of outside forces I couldn't control. That simply isn't true, she explained. Everyone is subjected to pressures. Schedules that do not allow for three balanced meals a day, the temptation of high calorie dishes prepared for guests, conditioning that equates food with comfort. But with the right approach, our response to these pressures is not out of control, Elizabeth quotes. Although her own weight loss success resulted in dropping 55 pounds and going from a size 14 to a size 6, she also rightfully warned against copying her results exactly. A word of caution though, on this business of dress sizes, she said, you might look splendid in a size 12, so don't start thinking that the only answer is to wear an eight. She added that despite always being in front of the camera, she still managed to avoid really looking at how much she had let herself go. This is why she called full length mirrors a dieter's best friend and recommended stripping down completely in front of one to really understand what goals you want to set for yourself. The actress didn't try to sugarcoat or make her tailor-made diet sound like a walk in the park, either. In fact, as someone who had attempted every get skinny quick trick she heard about, that was something she wanted to avoid. I'll never try and tell you dieting is fun, she admitted. Taylor wrote that she created her diet with the help of nutritionists and her personal chef. It included her favorite dishes like crab salad, spicy chicken, crunchy parmesan flavored potato skins, and a variety of fresh fruit salads that you can dress up with Elizabeth's fabulous low calorie mayonnaise. You'll also find a bit more lean steak and hamburger that you might expect on an ordinary diet. Unlike today's diets that limit carbs or calories, Taylor was clearly trying to balance flavor and nutritional intake with her variety of food options. Life on a total diet for the rest of one's life would be totally depressing, said Elizabeth Taylor to a writer from New York Times in 1986. The actress was 53 years old at the time and had called the interview to promote her new memoir come weight loss book in a pink peony filled 1,800 day suite in the plaza. The book called Elizabeth Takes Off is currently out of print, but some digging around on the internet are still available like the one I bought on Amazon. In Elizabeth's own words, the first real step to losing weight and keeping it off is achieving the right state of mind. You have to get your head in the right place where you can make it click, she says in the same interview. Without that inner click, it doesn't matter how many fad diets you go on to achieve the click. Taylor advocates conducting a good long chat with yourself in the mirror and why you need the diet in the first place. When having her own chat, Taylor reportedly utilized the words no and ridiculous after ballooning to 180 pounds, following oral surgery and a diet of ice cream and malted milk. Then comes the actual food. So Elizabeth Taylor mainly stresses the importance of eating plenty of fresh fruits and vegetables, lean protein, and avoiding too much red meat, which sounds like standard weight loss fare until you discover her meal plan and peculiar flavor combinations. Among the more palatable dishes, you'll find chicken barbecued with lime and potato skins. And she also has weird dishes like grilled steak or hamburger served on a single slice of whole wheat toast spread with half a tablespoon of peanut butter and half a cup of cantaloupe and orange mixed with low-fat cottage cheese and sour cream. 
and Elizabeth Taylor's breakfast every day was pretty much the same with dry toast with a single serving of fruit on the side. And here are some of Elizabeth's best quotes and advice from the book and you'll find them quite interesting and witty. You, Elizabeth suggests use an image of yourself for motivation. In a chapter titled, Keep Your Sense of Humor, Taylor recalls someone telling her that Debbie Reynolds kept a photograph of her taken during her fattest period on her refrigerator door. She said it reminded her of what could happen if she charged into the icebox, Taylor writes. During the initial stage of my diet, I thought, well, if it works for Debbie, it could work for me. I stuck a picture of myself at my worst on the refrigerator and every time I went to the kitchen to open the fridge I would see that picture of myself in my worst state and this would remind me that I should not break my diet. Addressing the reader she adds, if you think a picture of me as Miss Lard pinned up on your refrigerator will help you too, I have no objection. There are enough to choose from. A light workout. While Taylor adored horseback riding, swimming and walking for recreational purposes, her approach to a strict exercise routine was described as irresolute at best. One chapter in the book is titled Aerobic Exercises, Are They For You? Included in its recommended activities is an exercise to stand on your toes. In a later interview with Vanity Fair during the late 70s, the actress joked that her only exercise was changing the TV channels with the remote. And another mantra that she follows by is always leave room for chocolate cake. Once you achieved your optimal weight, Taylor recommends allowing one day a week to pig out on your wildest food fantasies. She elaborates with her chosen treats, fried chicken, mashed potatoes with gravy, lima beans, corn, chocolate cake. On the way back to LA, we were scheduled to stop in Washington and I called John Warner, that this is Taylor's ex-husband, just before we took off. Hello John, we'll be at the Duels International for several hours tomorrow. I would love to see you. It would be great if you come to the airport and visit and maybe bring some leftover fried chicken. And another mantra is never talk about your diet in public. Even the most patient of my friends will grow weary of your company if you talk about your diet, warns Taylor. When you're dieting, be discreet, she writes. You don't have to report to your acquaintances as though they were the commanding officers of your great war against fat. Should you choose to socialize with other dieters, she says, you'll likely only find absurd eccentrics. Taylor recalls how she once lost so much weight it started to affect her greatest asset, her bust. Once I dropped below 120 pounds, she recalls with horror, and I began to lose my bust. Believe me, I had to put on the, some flesh in a hurry. In 1960, she was generally considered to be the most beautiful woman in the world. And her daily diet consisted of the following. For breakfast, scrambled eggs, bacon, and a mimosas for breakfast. For lunch, hollowed out French bread filled with peanut butter and bacon. And for dinner, she had a feast of fried chicken, peas, biscuits, gravy, mashed potatoes, cornbread, homemade potato chips, trifle, and tumbler full of Jack Daniels. By the health nut standards of modern starlets, that's more than decadent. So she really didn't spend much time dieting, it seems like, earlier in life. It looks like maybe even till the 1970s and 80s when she really had to change things. So I, my feeling is she is kind of one of those people that for most of their life is genetically blessed and they just can more or less eat what they want and not gain weight. And it sounds like kind of towards her late 40s, she really had to start making changes. And Elizabeth says, it's too easy to become fixated on calories. Too tempting to say to yourself, um, I can have just 20 potato chips for 230 calories or six ounces of chicken for 310 calories. That's no way to lose weight. So here are a list of Elizabeth Taylor approved foods. These are a few that she likes to eat. So the first one of Elizabeth Taylor approved foods are the farmhouse breakfast. And this consists of two fried eggs hamburger patties, hash brown potatoes, and a stack of silver dollar pancakes and maple syrup. Although Taylor eventually traded the decadent meal for a simple breakfast, a seasonal fruit, whole wheat toast, and tea or coffee. Another one of her favorite foods, just like Marilyn Monroe, is a hot fudge sundae. So Taylor loved and lost many times in her life, but she was loyal to her favorite food even while dieting. She especially loved to indulge in ice cream milkshakes and hot fudge sundaes. At the age of 16, Elizabeth Taylor adored peppermint milkshakes and hot fudge sundaes from Will Wright's Ice Cream Parlor. The Southern California dessert chain 
famously made thick, rich ice cream. It was also popular with Frank Sinatra and the Rat Pack. Chocolate martinis. So this is one of Elizabeth Taylor's favorite drinks and she eventually swore off alcohol and became one of the first celebrities to openly discuss her addiction to booze and pills. She also publicly checked into the famous Betty Ford Center in 1983. She invented her own favorite drink. It's a chocolate martini made with vodka, Hershey syrup, and Kahlua. In Elizabeth Taylor's book, she also includes a more detailed two-week meal plan based on what the actors actually ate and recipes for several dis dishes. And some of these dishes in the book include grilled lean steak or hamburger with the peanut butter on whole wheat toast. And she also had the Taylor sandwich, which consisted of puffed wheat crackers topped with low-fat cheese wrapped in lettuce. She also has her famous low-cal mayonnaise, and the recipe is in the book. And Elizabeth Taylor also emphasized eating as slow as possible. I've discovered that the longer it takes me to eat, the more it seems I've eaten, she wrote. When I dine with others, I try to be the last one finished, never the first. When I'm alone, I prefer to concentrate on the food rather than combining eating with other activities that might interfere with my enjoyment, such as watching television or talking on the phone. I even try to clear my head of plans, projects, and problems. Because I've made the most of every bite, I feel satisfied even if I've eaten small portions. Of course, like most women, Taylor's weight continued to seesaw throughout the rest of her life, but there's no denying that these techniques worked for her in the mid-1980s. She also made a good point of not following fad diets, even her own, just to lose weight as quickly as possible. The actors advise consulting with your doctor before partaking any weight loss program. And she also recommends picking your magic number. So don't keep losing weight for the sake of it. As someone who is prone to extremes, Taylor was seriously against the message that thin is always better. Instead, she advised people to get to the point that suited them and their body type. She also says to banish pipe dreams about your ideal weight. Just because you weighed 115 pounds at age 18 doesn't mean you should weigh the same at 35. Really interesting going through this book. I found lots of recipes and a lot of them kind of seem gross. I don't know I'm, if I'm a fan of the hamburger meat with the peanut butter on the toast. I did try making it. I took a hamburger patty and then put it on a dry toast with peanut butter. It was kind of interesting. I don't know if I'd want to eat it again. I also tried mixing sour cream and cottage cheese with some fruit. That one, I do like cottage cheese. It was okay. I don't know if I'd eat that again. I don't know. Her diet was very strange and the dry toast in the morning I find to be kind of plain, but I guess without the butter, it's more low calorie. Um, obviously, I love her indulgence in the fried chicken and hot fudge sundaes because I also love fried chicken and hot fudge sundaes and I do like the idea of splurging once a week on some of your favorite treats because I really don't see the point in depriving yourself. But all in all, I think Elizabeth Taylor is just one of those people that for the most of her life was genetically blessed and probably didn't have to do that much exercise and she kind of had to make changes later in life. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you are willing to try any of Elizabeth Taylor's diet secrets. All right, I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.